And we are now able, uh, officially, so to speak, to say that there is going to be, when everything is in, there is going to be a hung parliament. Well, fuck me. Unless you've been living in an actual cave recently, you may realise that the results of the general election were a little bit surprising. <laughs> I have to say, nationally, it wasn't remotely what we expected. I think I said something like, the best we can hope for is a small majority for the Conservatives, and now they haven't even got that. It's crazy. But for me personally, my home constituency is just mind-blowing. I might as well tell you what it is. My home constituency is Canterbury. Now, I said in a video that it was highly unlikely that we would be able to break the Tory rule. We'd had Julian Brazier, the Conservative MP, for 30 years, so I knew that it was a very Conservative area. What I didn't realise was actually Canterbury has been Conservative for 160 years years. It's literally the Guinness World Record for a constituency that's been held by the same party for the longest amount of time. In one of the biggest shocks of the night, Canterbury went Labour. And just a little weather warning, look out for some flying pigs. Literally, it's incredible that Rosie Duffield for Labour won in Canterbury. I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of my area. The results of this election have really shown the potential power for the left. And despite all of the, the slamming of Jeremy Corbyn of saying he's unelectable, Labour has done better than anyone could have expected. What with my constituency going Labour in literally one of the craziest moments, and also places like Kensington going Labour, I really feel for the first time that I can say, without worrying about being like youthfully naive, anything is possible. My home went labour. Anything could happen now, politically. Like, there ain't no boundaries, mate. There's such a celebratory feeling amongst the left at the moment, and I think that's completely um, justified. But that's not to say that everything is over. In case you haven't heard, the Conservatives want to get their majority in government by doing a coalition with the DUP. Pretty much the only argument in favour of this coalition, it will give us a majority government and therefore give us a slightly stronger hand in the Brexit negotiations. But just, it, that's it. That's literally it. That is the only advantage. It's not even that much of an advantage because they'd still have such a tiny majority. There are way too many dangers and the fact that the Conservatives are considering teaming up with the DUP goes to show, I think, the true nature of a lot of their party. Like, of course there are Liberal Conservatives, I'm not denying that, but I think the fact that they are considering this says a lot about how much Conservatives are willing to give up just to get into power. The DUP is a terrible party, just, just go and look it up. They're against abortion. Abortion is still illegal in Northern Ireland, which is crazy. The party is also against gay marriage or anything, really. They're just really anti-gay. They deny climate change. Several of their members are creationists and want creationism to be taught in schools as fact. There was a sign I saw at a protest that was perfect. It just said, if you want to know who the DUP are, imagine Donald Trump as a group of people, but worse. And of course there's the argument that the Conservatives won't forgo their values and their morals in order to please the DUP and get a coalition with them. But I mean, I'm just going to put it out there, do you trust the Conservatives? But it's not just about, like, whether Conservatives would change the rules here in England or elsewhere. It's about the fact that they would be supporting and funding a party that supports these values. Like, I do care about people in Northern Ireland as well, FYI. You know, if they do the supply and demand thing, the DUP can demand funding and, and get more power, and we don't want a party like that with more power. It's also really worth noting that it could seriously fuck up the agreements in Northern Ireland. I mean, to give you an example, Sinn Féin said the DUP, by considering this coalition, have betrayed the interests of the people, I believe they mean the Irish people, and the new arrangement would end in tears. This sounds like a real strong and stable government, doesn't it? Yeah, great. Like I said, there is the argument that it would give us a stronger hand in Brexit negotiations. But I'm just going to read out a quote from Alistair Burt because he says it far more eloquently than I ever could. The new composition of the Commons knocks on the head the idea that the negotiations should be solely in the hands of the Conservative Party. To address Brexit with a more compromised-based thing, and, you know, I, I saw one person saying, do you want everything to be scrutinised because we have a weak government? I'm like, well, yeah, actually I do want things to be scrutinised. I don't want one party to have a complete mandate over this. And so as Alistair Burt says, if senior parliamentarians and business and agricultural figures worked together and came to compromises, to quote, this would demonstrate to the EU that what had seemed a weakened position with the loss of a majority had been transformed into a stronger position in which a sense of national endeavour was shown in the degree of agreement for its position. Doing this would enable the government to move forward 
forward with its timetable with a sense of backing from public and parliament. And that last sentence is really important as well because there's been strong, strong movement against this DUP coalition. No, people don't want the support of a sexist, homophobic, racist party. And that's why I wanted to make this video. Yes, we have the results. Yes, we're waiting on what's going to happen with the hung parliament. But don't think that democracy ends at the polling booth. There has been multiple protests already and I actually attended one of them. to protests, I would recommend it because they can be really fun. At this particular one, there was a real atmosphere of celebration. It was celebrating what Labour had done and what Corbyn had done. Look what he did. Wasn't it fabulous? <laughs> It's also really nice to be surrounded by like-minded people and it's really inspiring when you get to hear major political activists speak. Because of Eritrea and the refugee crisis is a serious matter to me because we have a large immigration rate. Jeremy Corbyn stood up for the refugees and the migrants and called out the the right-wing media for what they were doing, which was scapegoating these migrants and blaming them for the economic crisis when really and truly they are just victims of war and human rights abuses. Basically, what I'm saying is politics didn't end on the 8th of June. In fact, there will be another protest organised by Owen Jones on the 17th of June. If you have the time or the ability, then I would recommend going and, you know, using your voice to stand up and say, this is what happened in the election. We had a 52% of the country voting for left-wing and socialist parties. Don't you dare make our government more right-wing. The thing about these results is, yes, they're a mess and everything's so uncertain and the exact opposite of strong and stable and it's really kind of scary at the moment. But if nothing else, these results show that there is hope. Despite the criticism of youth apathy, despite the criticism of Corbyn, we did it, man. I mean, okay, we didn't completely did it because we didn't win the election, but it does show that getting out there and getting involved with politics and using your vote and using your voice is absolutely worthwhile. And and that's just amazing. I didn't expect to wake up on the 9th of June and be dancing around my flat because my home constituency went labor. I think we've got a momentum going now. But with all that said, this does mark the end of my little political streak on my channel. If anything particular comes up that I want to talk about, or if, in fact, if there's anything that you see in the news that you would like me to talk about, whatever it might be, like, I am happy to make more political videos. What I'm saying is that this kind of marks the end of my politics only, and I will be returning to my little music, poetry, thoughts, whatever the hell my channel is. I don't know what it is. I also want to say thank you, actually. I don't really know who to, but I actually know for a fact that I changed several people's minds, which is an absolute honour. I'm proud of my country right now. I'm grateful. I don't know. I just have a lot of emotions about politics at the moment, but it's generally, they're good for once. They're really, really good. I will see you soon with something a little more lighthearted. Goodbye.